Hello everybody, my name is Edivaldo, I work at Danfoss Climate Solutions and I'm here today to show you what are the main differences between the AKPC 651 and the new successor AKPC 651A. But before we start, let's have a quick overview about the Danfoss Pack Controllers portfolio. As you can see in this slide, Danfoss has a large portfolio for pack controllers. Danfoss has pack controllers for CO2 and HFC applications. And Danfoss has also controllers based on AK modules and MCX controllers. As you can see here, the AKPC 651A is the largest controller in the MCX platform. It means that you have more IOs to use uh, for many functionalities in your pack. With the AKPC 651A, you can manage up to one suction group with up to 10 compressors. This controller uses modules for the system manager. It means that if you have a system manager, you can communicate it so you can have access to all the variables of the AKPC 651A in the system manager. And now, let's go for some AKPC 651A highlights. So, as you can see here, we have some topics that makes this controller more efficient than the AKPC 651. For example, higher execution speed. It means that now we have a new and a faster processor. So, now you can configure your application in this, this new controller and the application will run faster than the AKPC 651. The enhanced memory capability. It means that now we have internal space for log history, for images and other files as well in the web server. We'll talk more about that later. We have now a possibility to power supply your controller using a unique wide range power supply. You can use from 24 VAC to 200 VAC. It means that now it's much more easy to power on your controller. We have also enhanced the input-output types, so all the analog inputs now, they have noise filtering and all of them accept the PT1000 sensor, which makes much more flexible in your installation. And also, we have added some connectivity items. For example, now our controller has Ethernet with web server embedded, where you can see everything that is going on in your controller. You can see the images, you can see the pressures, you can see the temperatures via web server. And one of the biggest differences as well is that now we have the USB connector. Via USB connector, you can load files in your controller and you can also update it using the USB. As you can see, we have upgraded the AKPC 651 to turn it into the new AKPC 651A. I have installed here both hardwares for comparison. So this is the AKPC 651 and this is the new AKPC 651A. So as you can see, they are very similar. And if you need to exchange both controllers in an installation, probably you won't have bigger problems because the hardware is so close to each other. So you won't need very big changes in the wiring, in its, uh, which makes it very flexible to replace if necessary. So. Let's point these small hardware changes. Let's talk about the digital outputs first. So, from the digital outputs number 10 to number 13, as you can see in this image over here, we have internally changed the model of the relays. So they are not SPDT anymore, they are SPST. It means that now we don't have the normal closed contact anymore. However, if you still need to use the normal closed contact, you can use the digital outputs DO14 and DO15. Another change is that we increased the number of solid state relays outputs. Now we have four new solid state relays outputs. It means that you can control, for example, CR2 compressors or you can, you can control digital scroll compressors with this new controller. These are the main differences in the digital outputs. Now, let's talk about the analog outputs. So, for the analog outputs, as you can see also here in this image, the main difference is that they are internally powered on. So, you don't need an external power supply for the analog outputs. They are internally powered on, which makes it even more easy for you to install this new controller. And now, let's focus on the inputs of the new controller. 
as I mentioned before, we have enhanced the inputs of this new controller. So now you can use PT1000 temperature sensors or you can use NTC temperature sensors in any of the analog inputs. And also there is a very uh, interesting new feature for this new controller. Now there is a noise filtering. So it means that you, you can have pressure and temperature readings much more stable than, than before. And now talking about the digital inputs, we have provided uh, digital inputs for voltage free contacts. It means that you don't need voltage anymore. You can use dry contacts to activate the digital inputs. There are also other important topics to mention. For example, the power supply. You can use a power supply with 24 VAC up to 230 VAC. It means that you have a wide range of power supply for your controller. Another point is the RTC, the real-time clock. The real-time clock is kept for five days without powering on the controller. So you can have the data retention for up to five days. Another very important change is the USB port. So with the USB port, you can load files in the controller and you can also update the controller. Another topic is the Modbus protocol. So you have RS-485 and Modbus protocol in the AKPC 651A. And maybe the biggest change at this point, talking about hardware and software, I would say, is about the web server. There is an embedded web server in this controller and that's what we are going to talk about now. And now let's take a look at the web server. But before we start, it's important to mention that you need some tools to do that. You need, of course, your PC, so we can configure the web server using our PC. You need an Ethernet cable because the protocol uses Ethernet, so you can use any Ethernet cable you have. It can be cross or it can be common. It doesn't matter. The controller accepts both. And of course, you need to connect the controller to your PC. And that's what I'm going to do now. And I'm going to show you live how to configure the web server and the controller. So now it's connected and let's go for the configurations. Okay. And now, since we have our AKPC 651A connected to our PC using the Ethernet cable, we are allowed to get inside the web browser in order to configure the controller. So let's choose for that one of the web browsers. In my case, I will choose the Microsoft Edge, but you can choose the web browser of your preference. Let's use for that the fixed IP address, which I use it to configure my AKPC 651A. In my case, I use it the address, this address over here. And once you you connect to the controller, it will require for you a username and password. The standard credentials are the username is admin and the password is PASS with capital letters. This is the standard uh, credentials, but you can find this information also in the manual. Good. Once we are in, the controllers request for you to change the password, but you can do this at other time. That's what we, we will do. We'll change this later. So let's take a look at the left side to take a look at the menus, what the controller offers to us. So let's come over here in settings, for example. Here, you can choose the site name for your controller. You can change the language, you can change the units and also the date format according to your region, as well as the NTP. You can change the NTP, the network time protocol, according to your, your zone. So you can select the, the time it will acquire the time automatically using the, the web. And also you can uh, enable other features just like the mail, for example, the FTP, the syslog and the HTTPS. So let's just save it for now. Good. Another very important feature is under the files menu. So here you can upload files in the controller to use them later. That's what we are going to do now. So, for example, let's upload an image to use this image later in our overview. So let's go to upload and then we come over here. I will take an image. The adapco that we are going to use later in our overview. Okay. 
and the image was successfully uploaded. Nice. So let's configure our controller so we can see everything that's going on. So we can see the pressures, we can see the temperatures, the status of the compressors and everything. So for that, we come over here under Network Configuration menu and let's add a node. So here we select the node MCX20B2 because it's already uh, automatic detected. The description, let's use that, let's select a name for this controller, AKPC651A, for example. Let's imagine that we have more than one controller, so let's save it as medium temperature, for example. And that's okay. We just save it. Good. Once it's saved, it, now we can come over here at the network overview, and here we have our controller. It's online. And once we can uh, have this controller here, network overview. We can select the variables that we want to see in the main screen. So let's go for that. At this point, there is nothing on overview and we are going to configure some variables over here. So main parameters, for example, let's insert the start stop variable in this, uh, the, the main switch variable in the first menu. Let's leave available also some other parameters over here as additional parameters. So, for example, let's leave the uh, let's leave the main switch. It can be the main switch here as well, and some runtime chart parameters. Let's select uh, the unit of set points and edit table parameters. You can allow some parameters outside of the menu in order to be changed in an easy way, so you don't need to get into the menu to change them. They will be in the, in the overview. So we can come over here at the plan type, for example. And then let's set the refrigerant type here, for example. Good. And we can also add a custom view. Remember that image that we just uploaded some minutes ago? We can use that image over here. So let's select that image as a background. So it's over here. And then we have our image over here. Nice. So let's save. And let's take a look at the overview web page to see how it is now. Okay. So we have our variables over here. So we can see what is going on in the controller. And we have also our image. Of course, you can uh, add the image of your preference over here. You can always come into the parameters settings menu to take a look at all the parameters and you can change also the parameters as you can see over here. All the parameters of the controller are available at this moment. So you can change them remotely. You don't need to be in front of the controller, right? So all of the parameters are set over here. And you can also take a look at the alarms menu at this moment. We don't have any alarms active. This is a very interesting feature, the runtime chart. So here in the runtime chart, you can select up to 32 variables and they will be displayed online for you. So you can uh, make an analysis of the behavior of the equipment. So let's select some variables over here and then we know exactly what is going on with our system. So for example, let's select the suction. And then we go for the control status. And let's take a look at the PO pressure. Okay. And then we have our PO pressure over here. As you can see, the graph is online. As the temperature, as the temperature and the pressure, suction pressure changes, you can see in the graph in real time. You can add, remember, you can add up to 32 variables in this graph. So let's add another variable. So let's add, for example, the PC pressure. And now we have both. We have the suction pressure and we have also the condensing pressure. That's a very interesting feature for uh, analysis if you need. 
And now that we have our runtime chart running, we are creating our graph for deeper analysis. But in this meantime, let's take a look at the other features of the controller. So if you come here, for example, at physical I.O., here you can have a quick overview of all the analog inputs which are being used. So for our example, we are using the analog input 7 and analog input 8. The analog input 7 is being used for the PO suction pressure. And you can also change the function of the type. This is a very interesting feature if you are not in the site at the moment. You can do this for any analog input. Good. So now let's take a look at the overview, which is a different overview created in the past. In this system overview, we can also add an image and we can also add more variables. Let's see how it works. Let's edit our system overview. So let's add a background. It will be the same image that we used some minutes ago. And let's select some variables for our example. And then here we can select the variables that we want for our case. So let's select some variables in this case, uh, the suction. This suction. And uh, control status. And let's go for PO pressure, where we can place everywhere everywhere we want and let's add also the PC pressure and let's place this variable here and another important vari variable is the running capacity of the compressors so we can add this variable here for example let's leave it over here and we can also enable the variable of number of running compressors Okay, you can add as, much var as many variables you want. So let's save. And after saving, let's see how is our system overview at this moment. Okay, so now we have 4.4 bar in the suction and we have two compressors running, which represents 55% of the total load of compressors. Good. It's important to mention that this system overview is customized and it's, it doesn't have any relation with this overview that we just created over here. Of course, you can uh, create both screens separated. You don't need to make them uh, exactly the same. So, for example, in this overview that we created before, let's add some other variable in the main screen. So, for example, suction. Let's add another variable over here. Control status. And uh, let's add the saturated suction temperature. OK. And let's place this over here. Remember that this is a variable that we have not selected before in the previous step. And let's save. And let's see how is our overview. Good. So now we have an overview screen with a saturated temperature over here. But if you come after the system overview, you have a different screen over here. There are a lot of possibilities, as you can see, in this new AKPC 651A controller. And that's how you configure the web server of your AKPC 651A with your computer just by using your Ethernet cable. That's it. Well. That's all I would like to show you. Thanks for watching the video. You are always welcome to contact your local Danfoss team if you need further support. Thank you very much. See you. Bye bye.